Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. So I thought it'd be a good time to do a video on your actual solar inverter because we get a lot of customers that call that think their system isn't working and, and not necessarily um, you know, a bad thing, but I thought it'd be helpful to kind of help you understand how to check if your system is or isn't working. Um, regardless of where you live. Now, I have an in-phase system for my home, so it's gonna be a little bit different if you have a string inverter, say Solar Edge or an SMA Sunny Boy or a Fronius inverter. They have some additional steps that you may need to take to ensure the system's working properly. Now, if you have internet and your system offers you obviously phone support so that way you can see the data on your phone and then you no longer see that data there might be a couple reasons to that one maybe the system's no longer connected to the internet two your system had a cellular modem and it the data plan has expired so you'll need to renew that and or three the inverter has completely stopped working now End phase, obviously you have a bunch of microinverters up on the roof. So you can't actually go and look at them, but believe it or not, there's actually a light on every single one of them that blinks depending on how it's working. Orange you means it's producing power, just not communicating with the Envoy, which is inside this combiner box. Uh, red means it's not working at all. And then green means, hey, you're good to go. Now this tends to apply to every string inverter on the market. Some also have an extra indicator light, like a blue one, which helps you know that it's connected to the internet and reporting. Both SMA and Solar Edge have that extra light there, so you should have a blue and a green one, letting you know that you're producing power and you're connected to the internet and reporting data. So if I open up my combiner box right here from Enphase, I can see I have my solar circuit breakers, and then I have my Envoy breaker. Depending on the size of your solar system, you may have multiple solar breakers in here. You can have up to four strings in total. Your configuration may vary on your microinverter system. If you have a solar edge or an SMA or another type of inverter that's string based, you wouldn't have necessarily a combiner box here. You would have more or less an inverter that's this size or bigger. I mean, they get pretty big that would help you figure out what's going on with your system. Now, you always wanna make sure, the first step is to make sure all these breakers are in the on position. The rule of thumb, they should be flipped in. So they should always be pushed in, and then most of the breakers that are labeled says on, and then off on the other side. Another indicator is up here near the Envoy, there's actually some lights, and I'll grab the camera so you can get a closer look. So if we get up here, you can see that we have some lights. And I'm gonna go over what each of these lights indicate. So the one on the left tends to mean that you're produced, or this means that you're connected to the, the end phase cloud. The next one typically isn't on. So that one has an indicator of a phone and that's usually used, I'm gonna get the camera close again. So you can see the Enlighten app. You can see my Envoy, I have a red light. So that'll happen from time to time. Usually you want it to be green but it just depends on your internet connection. As you can see, mine just reported to Enlighten and it went green. So perfect, <laughs> we captured that at the perfect time. So sometimes your Envoy will be doing an update or something in the background on Enphase on their server end and it may not be reporting data and that might be red. It's okay, what is really important are the next two lights. As you can see, you have a lightning bolt and then some arrows with the up and down. So the lightning bolt and the arrows indicate power production. Obviously, electricity is you know always lightning oriented. And then the arrows indicate the microinverters communicating with the Envoy. If you had any communication issues with your microinverters, that would be a red light like we just saw with Enlighten. So that is a, your really good first place to check out. Now, if you don't have any lights 
on in here, then we're going to want to go and look at your electrical panel. And this can be said also with your string inverter. So if you have solar edge and you see you got a red light or you have SMA and you see a red light or you have your Fronius inverter and you have a red, whatever type of string inverter you have, they should have a red light to indicate that there's a fault. And when you have a fault, usually that means there's something wrong with the inverter. If you don't have any lights at all, then obviously there's no power getting in over here. So I'm gonna close this up. I know everything's in the on position. Let's assume that these lights weren't on. And this is a situation where we've walked customers through that have called us. They're like, hey, I don't think my system's working. I'm not sure what's happened. And so they're trying to understand, you know, we, we basically just walk them through the step of what's going on. So if we come over here, I have my two boxes for the electrical equipment. So we're gonna kind of come in, I think it's... Okay, so if we get in here, I'm gonna grab the camera. It's gonna be a little, a little unique, so bear with. Okay, so we have our electrical panel. Everybody has one of these on the side of their house, in the back of their house. It's pretty straightforward. And you can see in here, I have all my stickers, and then I have this AC disconnect. So a lot of the times this disconnect, this switchblade is sometimes off. Why does it end up off? You know, I really don't know. Sometimes it just does. But you, you wanna make sure that's in the on position. So it be pushed up. There's plenty of times where we've walked customers through a system and nothing's working and, and then we go, okay, well, let's look at your disconnect and it's in the off position. Well, there's your problem. So you always wanna make sure this is in the on position, regardless if you have an AC or DC system, optimizers, microinverters, you know, you're always, almost always gonna have an AC disconnect. This is really meant for fire. Now, if that's in the on position, maybe the breaker tripped in the main service panel. You're, we're all, we're, we're, you should always have a label near the breaker. As you can see, mine says right here, PV solar breaker, it's 30 amps. Again, it's pointed to the left, it's inward and it's in the on position. This is what you wanna see. Now, I have had situations where a customer's breaker had tripped, so you just shut it off all the way and then turn it back on. Really easy. These are the things you wanna know about your solar system so you don't have to wait for a technician to come out in a week or two to service it because if you can just, you know, maybe it's just the disconnect that, we, that got shut off and it just needs to be turned back on or maybe the breaker trip. Those kind of things happen. Now, if you have red lights, well, that's gonna be a little bit harder to troubleshoot as a homeowner, you, you know, because you're gonna need to open up a case with the manufacturer to figure out what is going on with the system and why you have some red lights going on. Now with Enphase, they have great customer support, whether it's for the installer or you as the homeowner. So you can always contact them and they're gonna try and figure it out remotely as best as possible, especially if your system's connected to the internet. Solar Edge can be helpful as well as SMA. You know, their wait times are going to vary depending on the inverter you have. Some companies, like if you have an older system like ABB or PVI, um, Aurora, you know, those are, they all got consolidated by one manufacturer. So you gotta make sure you call the right one. A lot of the times those older string inverters have a little display and they'll actually tell you what the fault code is. And you can do a little Google searching to try and figure it out. A lot of the times you just wanna notate that, that fault code because that's gonna determine what the issue is and whether it's a warranty issue or not. Uh, you know, when you have a string inverter with optimizers or without, depending on the age of your system, you know, that fault code is really valuable to determine if something's wrong up on the roof or if it's only related to the equipment down below. Things that we tend to see the most with string inverters is a GFI fault. So there's an internal ground fault in, you know, indicator inside there. And for some reason it will go bad in a lot of those ABBs, Aurora ones, PBIs. We've seen it, we've replaced a lot of those inverters for people that went solar with other companies back in the day that had string inverter technology. So it's not a big deal. Those tend to have a 10 year warranty. 
If you're out of your warranty, we strongly recommend that you go with an SMA America Sunny Boy system. Uh, their inverters are rock solid. They come with another 10 year warranty. And if you want, you can extend it up to 20 years. And they're great for systems that don't have optimizers. Remember, SolarEdge, you have to have their optimizers for their system to work. End phase, if you want this system, you have to remove all the modules and install microinverters on every individual panel. Depending on your budget might dictate what type of service you want to have performed after you have a fault occur on the system. You know, do you want to really upgrade the system or do you want to just, you know, get it fixed at a cost effective method? There's nothing wrong with replacing a bad string inverter with a better one that's newer. The SMA America is a phenomenal product. Now, if you have a new system and you got end phase microinverters, hopefully this has helped you understand like what steps you should take to ensure your system's working properly before you call a service department or the manufacturer because now you have a better understanding of, hey, I gotta check my breaker, gotta check my AC disconnect. Let's make sure all the lights are on inside this as well. Now, I, before I let you go, I wanna to touch on connecting the system to the internet. Now, if you have your Enphase app, there is actually a support button there, and one of the questions is, hey, why my Envoy is not connected to Wi-Fi? The Enphase has had internal Wi-Fi for many years now. And it's a phenomenal thing. You'd be surprised at how many manufacturers are, had been really slow to adopt that. And some of them still don't even offer Wi-Fi built into the unit. SolarEdge being one of them. Their big thing is hardwired or uh, cellular plan, which, you know, hardwired's fine and all, but you, you know, many installers don't run that line over. Now, what we tend to do is do hardwired with a range extender. So that way you still have control to change your network uh, without any potential issues, you know, through that range extender because we hardwire it to the unit So there's still an Ethernet cable when we have done solar edge in the past If you have an SMA Sunny Boy, the newer ones have Wi-Fi older systems like Fronius, ABB uh, Older Sunny Boy SMA systems. They, they you didn't have that type of monitoring. The screen was your monitoring So just make sure do a quick Google search, you know, how to connect my Enphase system to Wi-Fi again Enphase has a great step-by-step -step video. You're gonna press a button in here, open up your Enphase app, connect to the Envoy directly, and you'll be able to reconnect it to your home network. So if you change your Wi-Fi, don't worry. It's only a couple steps for you to reconnect your system to the internet. No different than your, your TV or your phone or any of those other devices. If you have another product, it might be a little bit more complicated. You might have to call a technician out. It just depends on your situation. Now, if you have a system that has a cellular data plan and that's expired, again, you're probably gonna have to call a technician or a service department to replace it with a new one. That could be pretty costly. I strongly recommend a Wi-Fi or hardwired connection over a cellular data plan just because you don't wanna have a reoccurring cost every five years, just so you can monitor your system on your app. Well, that's it for this video. I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Hopefully it's helpful for those of you that have experienced issues with the monitoring of your system, or it just, you're not sure if it's producing and this little guide can help you see like, is everything in the on position? Do I need to call someone? So feel free to give us a call to request your hassle-free quote from us by visiting us on, online by using the link down in the description below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great content coming in the near future. I plan on doing more live videos just like this one because I really f enjoy doing them live and walking you through a scenario. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.